Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace, my go-to for building a website and online shop. Hello, dear friends. Today's video is the third and final video in this three-part series where I'll finally be finishing this goldfish portrait. Real quick before I begin, if you'd like to see longer, more thorough tutorial versions of this piece where I recorded instructional voiceover as I was painting in real time, I'll be posting three more videos of this painting, including a color mixing demo this month and next month, all on my Patreon at patreon.com slash happydartist. In the first two videos, I went over the block-in and grisaille process, and now it's finally time to paint in color. Since I gave myself ample preparation before the color step, as evident by the first two videos, I'm now feeling confident and calm as I start rendering in color. Oftentimes, the first few brush strokes in the main color pass feels just as scary as starting a painting from the very beginning because the grisaille already feels like a completed painting in its own way. And by introducing the richer, more chromatic and refined colorful bits, we're shattering the completeness of the grisaille and forcing ourselves to start again in a more beginning preliminary state. But such is the nature of oil painting, I guess. To pick a starting point, I typically try to find an area that has a strong sense of contrast, which means it should contain a full value spectrum from darkest to lightest or vice versa. The eyes are a great place to start the color pass because they typically feature a lot of brilliant highlights and intense shadows. They're also such a striking high priority feature that painting them first allows you to build up the rest of the face to complement the eyes. But of course, this is just my personal preference, and it also depends on your lighting setup. But um, as always, I encourage you to experiment and figure out what works best for you, and it can change depending on the piece that you're working on. Also, I like to paint areas where the subject touches the background in the same sitting so that the edges can be treated wet on wet. So even if I don't paint the entire background, I'll at least paint the little bit of the background that touches the part of the subject that I'm currently working on. For example, in the video right now, as I was painting the forehead, nose, and lips, I also painted a little bit of the brown background that's touching the forehead, nose, and lips. I don't need to paint the entire background all at once, or I also don't need to paint the entire face all at once. I'm kind of just attacking it region by region and painting both the background and the face together as I move my way to complete the painting step by step. So sometimes I'll end up with a complete figure that has a rim of the environment around it, allowing myself to stitch that rim in with the rest of the background when I get to working on it later. You don't want to find yourself in a situation where the figure is fully complete, but the background is completely untouched or vice versa, because trying to elegantly blend dry paint with wet paint doesn't usually look as visually cohesive as blending wet paint with wet paint. Painting wet on wet gives more control over the softness of edges, smoothness of rendering, and is also great for integrating different color groups with each other seamlessly. I actually managed to paint two passes on the face as I was waiting for the white paint of the fish to dry because the textured white paint of the fish was so much thicker than every other part of the painting, it took several more days to dry compared to the rest. So as I waited for the fish to dry, I pretty much finished every other part of the painting first. Ideally, I would have timed this better and not have had to cram last minute so that I could have given myself time to let even the thickest grisaille portions dry so that I could paint the goldfish as I was painting the hair. But oh well, that's what I get for procrastinating. Okay, and last but not least, the star of the show are pretty little goldfish. 
As I mentioned earlier in this video and in the last video, I had laid down thick white paint to set the fish up for a fun glazing technique, which I'm going to demonstrate now. Once this paint is dry, I mix about half medium and half oil paint together to create a semi-transparent glaze. The medium I'm using is linseed oil mixed with oleo res gel, and the main oil colors I'm using are cadmium red light, cadmium yellow medium, and nickel yellow. I use more cadmium red light in the darker values of the goldfish where the fins transition into the hair, more cadmium yellow medium in the medium values on the fish's bodies, and more nickel yellow in the highlights. I will also take a brush that is lightly moistened with Gamsol to wipe off some of the yellowish glaze on the peaks of the highlights to reveal the white of the grisaille underneath in order to amplify the shiny metallic gold effect. Overall, this piece was relatively minimal compared to my other pieces, both in terms of composition and color palette. I think the simplicity of the piece actually made it a bit more visually interesting to look at, especially when it was inside its frame, which I was so fortunate to find after having already completed the painting, as it almost feels like a bespoke frame. If you'd like to see it in person, it's currently on display at Modern Eden Gallery in San Francisco. I'll be listing the show information in the video description. The original has already been adopted, but if you'd like a fine art print of this piece, I have them available in my shop at happyd-artist.com. And of course, you guessed it, my eternal never-ending sale is still going on in my shop. So if you'd like 20% off your order of prints and originals, just enter the code HOLIDAY at happyd-artist.com. And if you're interested in learning more about how to paint and draw, I have lots of art educational content on my Patreon page, including exclusive video tutorials, step-by-step -step photo tutorials, live streams, podcasts, and even surprise art art gift boxes, all available at patreon.com slash happydartist. I'd love to have you join my Patreon family. A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and supporting the art community. Squarespace is the best platform to create a professional website and online shop. Their beautifully designed templates are easy to use for beginners and look great on both desktop and mobile. I've sold my art through Squarespace for almost 10 years and I can attest to the quality of their online commerce features, whether you want to sell digital or physical items. They also provide useful analytics that help you make the most of your online business. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash happydartist to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Also, if you want to check out more artworks, works in progress, and just random daily artist adventures, feel free to check out my Instagram and you can follow me at the handle at happydartist.